A decent amount of rap beefs start over things like repping your city, your set, or your own toughness. What do you do when you feel like someone is questioning your integrity or maybe being hypocritical? As usual in this rap game, you diss them. You've seen the title, you know who this beef is about, but first I have to give some backstory. In the mid-90s, the so-called West Coast vs. East Coast beef was in full effect and Dog Pound and Snoop Dogg released a song called New York, New York from the Dog Pound's debut studio album, Dog Food, released in September 1995. The song was the lead single from the album and according to Corrupt, it was a dedication to the city that started hip-hop. While they were in Brooklyn filming the video, Biggie was on the radio, venting his frustration at allowing them to film there and apparently gave out the location which led to the Dog Pound's trailer being shot at. This caused the Dog Pound and Snoop to change up the idea for the video to diss New York City and led to the infamous kicking over the building scene by Snoop Dogg. In 1996, CNN responded to New York, New York with LALA, which features Tragedy Gaddafi and Mob Deep, and was the second single from their debut studio album, The War Report, which was released in June 1997. Now that that's done, fast forward to 1998. Jay-Z released his third album, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, which featured a single, Money Cash Hoes. And on that song, he has the line, What's the dealings? It's like New York's been soft ever since Snoop came through and crushed the buildings. Which of course is a reference to the Dog Pound song, New York, New York. This prompted Prodigy to respond in interviews, including one for The Source, on which he was on the cover of the magazine that month as a solo artist, expressing his dislike for Jay-Z due to his handling of the situation and the line in question. Years later, in his autobiography titled My Infamous Life, the autobiography of Mob Deep's prodigy, he states that Jay-Z was dissed by them but didn't respond at all so he wasn't fond of the line in the song referencing the beef with the dog pound. Before any of this though, there was a subliminal shot allegedly from Jay-Z to prodigy. On the song Trife Life from Mob Deep's second album, The Infamous, prodigy mentions the Marcy Projects on his verse. Then on Jay-Z's second album, In My Lifetime Value 1, on the song Where I'm From, he starts his verse with, I'm from where the hammer's rung, news cameras never come, you and your man was from in every verse in your rhyme. According to Prodigy, the only person at that point who had mentioned Marcy Projects in a rhyme was him, so it had to be aimed at him. Also, considering the you and your man, implying it was two of them, that makes it more likely to be a Mob Deep reference. Either way, this would all lead up to the 2001 Summer Jam where Jay-Z first performed the song Takeover, or at least the first two verses, which was a diss to Prodigy. Takeover is known by many as a Nas diss, which became the main focus once the full version was featured on Jay-Z's sixth album, The Blueprint, which released on September 11th, 2001. On the Summer Jam stage, Jay had a picture of Prodigy as a kid in a Michael Jackson-styled outfit, which was from Prodigy's grandmother's dance studio that he used to be a part of when he was younger. In the first verse of Takeover, Jay sticks to the subliminal shots, such as using the term Dunny in reference to Prodigy, which is a part of the Dunn language that Prodigy and his crew often use. He ended the verse with the lines, don't do it to me, Dunny, because I overdo it, so you won't confuse it with just rap music, which would prove to be quite ironic a little bit later, which I'll be mentioning shortly. On the second verse of the track, Jay turns it much more direct, however, and on the Summer Jam stage, he performed it a cappella, and the crowd was in an uproar. He goes on further to diss Prodigy for his height, the dancing, and Mob Deep's record sales not being as high as his own. He ended the verse with a notorious line, You guys don't want it with Hove? Ask Nas. He don't want it with Hove which made the Jay-Z vs. Nas beef that was also subliminal up till then public now as well. Then of course verses 3 and 4 were added later on which went at Nas and Prodigy respectively. This built some anticipation in fans to hear how Mob Deep, Prodigy in particular would come back on their next album, especially considering the controversy regarding their previous album Murder Music which was heavily bootlegged and wound up with the album being altered before release. In response to this, Mob Deep came at Jay on their fifth album, Infamy, released in December 2001, specifically on the song Crawlin', and also some shots were taken on the song The Learning, which features friend and frequent collaborator Big Noid, as well as rapper Vita from Murder Inc. On Crawlin', Prodigy goes at Jay-Z on both of his verses with lines referencing the Summer Jam screen picture of Prodigy, as well as making mention of Jay-Z allegedly skipping out on rap award shows out of fear of Prodigy and crew. Generally, threatening lyrics are also sent to Jay in the third verse, insinuating stealing his watch, among other things. Also, he responds to the 1988 line from Takeover and makes a reference to Hawaiian Sophie, the first single that Jay-Z was on with his then-mentor Jazz O. Overall, another solid diss. On the song The Learning, Prodigy also disses Jay on his verse as well with more subliminals, but a very clear shot at Jay with a reference to the Summer Jam screen incident and the Takeover verses. 
Apparently, the video for the learning lacked an appearance from Vita, who was on the chorus because Jay-Z reached out to Irv Gotti to block Vita from being in the video as she was signed to Irv's record label, Murder, Inc. This helped Prodigy learn how Jay-Z most likely managed to get his hands on the picture that was used on the Summer Jam screen, as Ashanti, who was also signed to Murder, Inc. at the time, apparently had been a member of the dance studio that Prodigy's grandmother owned. Around this time, fellow Queens rapper Cormega released his debut album, The Realness which includes the track Thun and Kiko, which features Prodigy. On this track, Cormega disses Nas, and Prodigy sends some more subliminal shots allegedly at Jay-Z. Besides these tracks, freestyles were done back and forth regarding the beef as well. One such freestyle was an instance where Jay-Z and his new artists like Beanie Siegel and the like were at a radio station. Beanie spit a subliminal line dissing Mob Deep, and also rapping was an artist named H Moneybags which is extremely similar to E Moneybags, a fellow rapper and friend of Prodigy who also knew Jay-Z. This prompted Prodigy to get on the phone with the radio station for them to get Jay-Z on the phone, and then he put E Moneybags on the phone with Jay to ask directly about H Moneybags. Shortly afterwards, Prodigy would call Funkmaster Flex to see if they can come up and do the same thing as Jay and crew did, and was told that they could. Once they arrived at the station, however, they were denied entry, as apparently Flex's boss had told him that they can't do it as it would cause more conflict. Shortly afterwards, E Moneybags would be killed allegedly due to an altercation he had involving Kenneth McGriff, aka Supreme, from the Supreme Team. According to Prodigy's autobiography, in October of 2001, he went to Puffy's restaurant Justin's with his crew, and the DJ there made an announcement that Jay Z and Jermaine Dupree were there as well, which led to Prodigy and crew wanting to confront Jay. They waited outside for Jay to leave, and when the two saw Prodigy and crew, Jermaine Dupree walked off, and Jay walked towards Prodigy with his hand extended to shake, and then Jay told him that there's no beef, it's just music. As I mentioned earlier, this is the exact opposite of what he said on TakeOver, which is very ironic. Somewhere around this time, Prodigy again took shots at Jay on the track Mob Niggas by the infamous Mob, which this song apparently has more than one version. One of Prodigy just doing the chorus, and one of him rapping a verse as well. So if you want to hear it, make sure to listen to the right one. He disses Jay specifically with the lines, I pledge allegiance to my infamous flag. Niggas get tagged and bagged for coming at my familia. This ain't the rock, nigga. We ain't them faggot ass niggas. The rock is clearly a reference to Rockefeller Records, Jay-Z's record label at the time. Later on, on the remix of Young Jeezy's I Put On, from his album The Recession, released in September 2008, Jay-Z on his verse again referenced the 2001 Summer Jam situation with the line, I put Prodigy in his place on that Summer Jam screen. Jay-Z has been known as someone who tends to take more subliminal shots at people, but in his beef with Prodigy, he did take some pretty direct ones as well. However, he did seem to focus more of his attention on dissing Nas after he dropped TakeOver. Perhaps he saw Nas as a better opponent, or maybe as Prodigy claims, Jay really was scared of Prodigy and his crew. Allegedly, Cormega talked to Jay-Z and warned him about how Prodigy is a lie wire and likely to shoot him, and Jay-Z avoided going to certain award shows in order to avoid Prodigy and his crew. Either way, both of these artists went on to continue to release solo albums, collaboration albums, and feature in so much more. Prodigy went solo, released a bunch of albums himself, Jay-Z and his business ventures, you know the deal. And they've had varying degrees of commercial and critical success in their music careers since then. Both go down as greats in hip-hop, especially in NYC. Unfortunately, Prodigy passed due to complications from his sickle cell disease in June 2017 at the age of 42. And according to Jay-Z, a few years before his death, they did speak in a club and everything was good between them. And he stated that he had much respect for Prodigy and has mentioned at some point that Prodigy could have been one of the greatest rappers ever. As I've mentioned, this is a beef that was overlooked due to the beef that was brewing between Nas and Jay-Z for a while. Then also, Nas and Prodigy were beefing as well around that time. It makes for an interesting situation overall. Prodigy on interviews has even stated that he fell back from the beef once Ether came out as he admits that he felt like he couldn't make a diss track as good as that one. Ether is one of my favorite diss tracks of all time as well as Nas being one of my favorite rappers along with Prodigy. They're easily some of the greatest artists that came out of the 90s especially in New York. Now, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Rap Beef series. I've seen some people recommending beefs to cover in the comment section as I've asked, and I'm taking some of them into consideration, so thanks for that. Now, what are your thoughts on this beef? What beef would you like me to cover next? What's your favorite songs by Jay-Z or Prodigy? Leave the answer in the comment section below, and as always, thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button, 
click the notification bell so you get notifications and stay tuned for more as always.